I considered um, Dr. Jiang's uh, uh, speech in Parliament to be just pure politics. National is feeling a great deal of pressure about the housing issue, and they would like to make the issue about someone else. <laughs> but as the opposition spokesperson on housing, uh, my view is that the problem is the failure of the national government's policies. What I will say is this, uh, that when I released the Barfoot and Thompson leaked sales data last year, to make a point that uh, there was a significant presence of, uh, of non-resident uh, buyers in the market, um, I did that basically to, to point to the, the government's refusal to collect real information and real data. But I regret that some people interpreted that action as an attack on Chinese New Zealanders. That is the last thing that I intended to do. In my view, if you're a resident or a citizen of this country, you're a Kiwi like anybody else. It doesn't matter where you came from. And my mission in politics is for us to fix this housing crisis and to make home ownership affordable for my son's generation. My generation's okay. When I bought my first house, when I was uh, in my 20s, it cost three times the household income of my wife and I. For my son's generation, the average house in Auckland now costs 10 times the average household income. Uh, no, I don't think that's the case. Um, look, let me be very clear about this. Uh, this debate is about foreign direct investment. And the issue here that I think New Zealanders of all ethnicities uh, have a stake in and feel strongly about, the issue is that non-resident foreign buyers, people who are not citizens or residents of this country, are playing a significant role in the housing market here, bidding up the cost of housing and making it much more difficult for New Zealanders of all ethnicities to have the dream of affordable home ownership. That's the issue. Now, the National Party is under great political pressure at the moment. The housing issue is probably the most explosive political issue currently in New Zealand. National is on the back foot, and they're desperate to make this an issue of race and try to pit one group against another. Unfortunately, on the basis of the data that the national government released last week, we can't really conclude anything about the role of uh, non-resident foreign buyers in the New Zealand housing market. Uh, the data they released was um, highly selective, and in fact, when you look at the data closely, you realise that uh, it, uh, we can only conclude that non-resident foreign buyers account for anything between 3 and 48% of the transactions during that period. And that's because the government chose to exclude 35% of the, uh, the transactions on the basis that they were people on student visas, uh, people on temporary work visas, and all of the companies and trusts. Now, on top of that, they excluded 10% of the transactions because those people had begun a contractual process before the six-month period. So you add all that up, plus the 3% that we know for sure were offshore buyers, you've got 48%. Now, that really is not very helpful and it doesn't take us uh, very far along towards better understanding the presence and the impact of, of foreign buyers in the housing market. And uh, the data is really not worth the paper that it's printed on. And that's why Labor's calling for a searchable and transparent register of foreign property ownership, like is the policy in Australia and like is the policy in the United Kingdom. Only then, I think, will we get uh, good information to inform this debate. Well, there are two ways. As a start, Labor will legislate to ban non-resident foreign buyers from buying existing homes. This is the policy of the Australian government. And in the last 12 months in Australia, $30 billion of mostly Chinese foreign direct investment has been channeled into the construction of new homes in, in Australia. That's a successful policy. That's what Labor would do. But the foreign buyers are only a small part of the problem. Most of the people who are speculating and making a killing at the, gener at the expense of generation rent are New Zealanders, not foreigners. 
And we have to do something about that too. So there are a whole range of tax and policy incentives, privileges, that speculators get. And Labor is committed to reviewing those and levelling the playing field so we don't get, uh, so we're not actively encouraging property speculation. You know, you can't blame people for thinking that in New Zealand today, the only way to get rich and make money is by speculating in property. And people, your, your uh, audience will have seen it on the, on the front page of the New Zealand Herald recently. A house sold five times in just a few months, each time adding many thousands of dollars to the price. And people were just making large amounts of money by flicking these houses on. It's crazy and it has to stop. If we don't do something about it, we'll never ever restore the dream of affordable home ownership.